Sports venues can be a very good investment if they're successful. And that's a big if. Many aren't. And here's 10 of the worst. Staying true to the motto, everything's bigger in Texas, Allen High School opened up one of the largest high school football stadiums in the U.S. in 2012. This massive 72-acre complex cost $60 million and could hold 18,000 spectators. It went far beyond a typical high school stadium with amenities such as a 75-foot HD video board, a golf simulator, as well as other training facilities for the other sports. In 2014, only two years after it had opened, cracks began to open up on the concourse and around the press box. They expanded to a point where the stadium was deemed to be unsafe. It was closed down until an engineering analysis could be done and repairs could be made. Initial investigations placed the blame on both the design, which was said to not be up to code in some places, as well as the construction process itself. Throughout the 2014 and 2015 years, repairs were made to strengthen the weak points noted in the investigation. Steel supports were added in some areas. Additionally, bricks were added around the base of the scoreboard, which was said to be vulnerable to strong winds. Ultimately, the repairs cost $10 million and were split between the construction company and the designers of the stadium. The stadium reopened in 2015 in time for the graduation ceremony that year and hasn't experienced any major issues since. Through the 2020 season, Allen High School is 53-0 in games played at that stadium. Beginning in 2018, rumors started about a new practice facility for the Carolina Panthers. As the buzz began to grow, so too did speculation as to where the site would be located. In 2019, lawmakers from South Carolina began assembling a large package of tax breaks and infrastructure improvements to try to lure the Panthers across the state line to South Carolina. By 2020, the tax breaks had been approved for the South Carolina facility, and the Panthers announced that they expected to hold their 2022 training camp there. Cracks in the plan began to become visible in 2021, however, when several key players in the project, including Panthers owner David Tepper, began to publicly question the project's future. In 2022, despite significant progress and hundreds of millions of dollars being already spent, construction was paused. The Panthers organization implied that this was the result of the city of Rock Hill, South Carolina, not living up to their original agreement. The city denied this claim, but shortly after this, Tepper canceled the agreement, and in June of that year, Tepper's real estate company filed for bankruptcy. A tense series of legal battles ensued, with fingers being pointed in all directions. In February, it was announced that the partially built facility, which had cost $170 million to get it to the state it was currently in, would be demolished over the next several months. At number 8, we have Miami Marine Stadium. One of the most unique entertainment venues to ever be built sits just off the coast of downtown Miami. Miami Marine Stadium, which hugged the shore of Virginia Key, was originally built for speedboat racing. The large concrete structure could hold over 6,000 fans, and when it was open, it was frequently a packed house. Interestingly, the entire structure, even the roof, was concrete. Unfortunately, on the very first day it opened, a man was killed in a racing accident. Despite how dangerous the sport could be, the stadium had a very successful first decade in business. During this time, the stadium hosted a number of famous events and musical acts. Slowly, though, the dangers of speedboat racing began to detract from its popularity, and the stadium began to host fewer and fewer races. Then, in the early 1990s, Hurricane Andrew ripped through Florida, leaving a damaged Miami Marine Stadium in its wake. Instead of fixing up the venue, the decision was made to close it for safety reasons. Over the next three decades, the stadium has been vacant and slowly rotting away. It's become a magnet for graffiti artists and is now one of the most heavily graffitied locations in the world. Recently, there's been plans to revitalize the stadium, and it was even designated a historical site. Renovation costs are estimated to be in the ballpark of $50 million, and right now, it remains to be seen how these plans will work out. On to number seven, we have the new Mostala Stadium in Valencia, Spain. In the latter part of the first decade of the 2000s, Valencia soccer fans were eagerly awaiting the opening of their new stadium. The state-of-the-art facility would cost 300 million euros and would hold 80,000 people. Original plans had the stadium opening in time for the 2009-2010 soccer season. Despite issues including a scaffolding collapse in 2008 that led to the deaths of four workers, much of the structure was complete by 2009. Then, in 2009, financial problems led to the project being put on hold. In 2013, after several deals to restart construction fell through, the stadium was downsized. 
The redesign, which was done to decrease costs and improve the project's financial viability, cut 20,000 seats as well as other amenities from the plans. These changes did little to revive the project as no progress has been made in the years since. The decade delay has begun to take its toll on the partially complete stadium and reports indicate that some elements of the stadium have begun to deteriorate. It isn't clear if or when this project will ever be finished. Coming in at number six, we have the Kemper Arena in Kansas City. It has a diverse history hosting all kinds of events, including the NBA, NHL, NCAA, WWE, political conventions, and concerts. This rich history almost ended before it could get started when the stadium suffered a catastrophic collapse shortly after opening. Only five years after it was built, in 1979, a large portion of the building collapsed. Ironically, the building had previously gotten an award from the American Institute of Architects for its unique design. The roof was supported by an external structure which allowed for unobstructed views inside the arena. During a storm in 1979, the rainwater began pooling on the roof. This additional weight began to swing in the winds. Due to miscalculation, the bolts holding the roof couldn't support the swinging weight. A one acre section of roof collapsed into the arena floor below. This caused a spike in air pressure beneath it blowing out numerous windows and causing massive additional damage. Luckily, the arena was not in use at the time and nobody was injured. Repairs were made in the following year and the arena was able to reopen only one year later. The arena has been renovated three more times since and continues to be used to this day. On to number five, we have the Memphis Pyramid. This concept was first initially thought over in 1954 and included three pyramids. No progress was actually made though for the next three decades until the idea was resurrected in the 1980s. The plan was accepted by the city and construction began in 1989. The venue had problems starting from the very first event when inadequate drainage led to a flood around the stage area. Also, due to its unusual shape, acoustics were not great for concerts or sporting events. The running joke was that you got to hear two concerts for the price of one due to the echo. Despite these issues, the venue actually had a pretty successful first decade in use. But this changed when the city was trying to lure the Memphis Grizzlies to town. The Memphis Grizzlies came to town and they played in the arena for three years, but it was determined that it wasn't a good long-term fit. So only a few years after they came to town, a new venue was built right down the street for a quarter billion dollars. They also had a non-compete which essentially shut down the pyramid. Debate ensued regarding what should be done with the now abandoned structure. After a number of ideas, Bass Pro Shops stepped up to redevelop the site into a megastore, complete with a hotel, observation deck, restaurants, and an indoor shooting range. The city chipped in another $30 million to help with this redevelopment. So when looking at the big picture of this project, some may call it an overwhelming success, but it certainly wasn't because it was a success as a sports venue. On to number four, we have the Hartford Civic Center. Built in the 1970s as a home for the ice hockey team, the New England Whalers, the Hartford Civic Center was considered state of the art for its time. One of the key features of this building was a unique roof design, which was supported by only four columns. The Space Trust roof, as it was called, was built on the ground and then lifted into place. Spectators received unobstructed views as a result of the design, and the developers managed to save money as well. It was seen as a win-win and a model for future arenas. Then in 1978, only seven years after it was built and only hours after an event that had thousands of fans in attendance, the roof collapsed catastrophically. Thankfully, no one was still in the building and there were no injuries. Although there was snow on the roof at the time, engineers determined that the root cause of the failure was in fact the original design. Almost as soon as it was lifted into the place, the roof started to suffer a slow progressive failure that ultimately resulted in the 1978 collapse. Design errors including the underestimation of the weight of the roof were key in leading to the roof's demise. Over the next two years, the roof was rebuilt much stronger than before, and in 1981, the arena reopened. In the decades since, the building has seen a number of uses and has now become a key part of the city's history. It has gone through several renovations since and was recently rebranded as the XL Center. Down to number three, we have Campbell Stadium in Camden, New Jersey. Costing roughly $35 million and expected to be a major catalyst for Camden's downtown redevelopment, Campbell Stadium opened a great fanfare in 2001. The stadium was set against a picturesque backdrop of the Ben Franklin Bridge, the Delaware River, and the Philadelphia skyline. Only 18 years later though, after struggling to maintain economic viability, the stadium was demolished, costing taxpayers millions more. 
This is one instance where the stadium itself seemed to be just fine. By all accounts, it was a great stadium. Unfortunately, Camden, New Jersey just wasn't able to support an independent minor league baseball team, and it wasn't economically viable to continue. Ironically, after the baseball stadium was demolished, it was replaced with another baseball stadium, just a smaller one used by Rutgers Camden. Down to number two, we have the Cambodia National Olympic Stadium. In 1963, construction began on Cambodia's Olympic Stadium. By 1964, the stadium opened just in time for Cambodia to not host the Olympics. Political unrest in the region led to the sporadic use of the facility following its open. There were several events here, none of which were the Olympics, and very few that even came remotely close to filling the stadium. In 1966, there was a FIFA match between North Korea and Australia that was held here. Interestingly, because few North Koreans were able to make the trip, a decree was made that half the crowd would have to cheer for one team and half the crowd would have to cheer for the other team. During the Khmer Rouge, most athletic events were banned and the stadium began to be used for a much darker purpose, public executions. In recent years, though, efforts have been made to revamp the facility and many locals use it for exercising. Cambodia is scheduled to host the Southeast Asian Games some felt this would be a great opportunity to fully renovate the stadium and finally let it get some use. But ultimately, the decision was made to build an entirely new stadium nearby. Before we get to number one, we're going to throw one honorable mention in there. And this one's arguably, well, pretty clearly the worst of all of them, but it doesn't really fit in with the rest. This one is Fidene Amphitheater in ancient Rome. Gladiatorial games were hugely popular in the Roman Empire, but there were periods of time in history when they weren't allowed. Shortly after one of these prohibitions were ended by Emperor Tiberius, huge crowds flocked to the games being held in Fidene. These particular games were being held in a poorly built wooden stadium built by a slave-turned-businessman named Attilus. Shortly after the crowd of 50,000 or more packed into the stadium, the amphitheater collapsed catastrophically. Since this accident occurred almost 2,000 years ago, Accurate casualty totals are unavailable, but some estimates put the death toll at a remarkable 20 to 30,000. This tragedy had huge ramifications for the future of Roman construction projects, which would now be held to a much higher standard of quality. Attilus was exiled for the role he played in the tragedy, and new restrictions were placed on who could host and who could attend gladiatorial games. And finally at number one, we have the ever-grand Guangzhou Football Stadium in China. It was an ambitious project that aimed to become the world's largest football-specific venue. It was initiated in April 2020 and was designed to seat 100,000 spectators, which even would surpass Barcelona's well-known stadium. The Lotus-inspired structure, with an estimated cost of 1.7 billion U.S. dollars, was set to become the home of the Guangzhou Football Club and a potential host for the 2023 Asian Cup. However, the project faced significant setbacks due to Evergrande's collapse. Construction on this stadium was halted in 2021, and in 2022, Evergrande canceled the project, returning the land to the Guangzhou government. In March of 2024, the project was revived with a very scaled-back design. The new Guangzhou football park would have a reduced capacity of only 73,000 seats. The China Construction 4th Engineering Division a state-run construction company, took over the project with a budget of only $328 million, just a fraction of the initial $1.7 billion plan. Thanks for watching. New videos out every Friday. Please like and subscribe. And uh, if you got any suggestions for other types of videos you want to see, let me know.